Welcome back to another episode of your Hope-Filled Perspective, where it's always our goal to restore hope, renew minds, and empower listeners to live in their God-given identity. I'm excited that you've decided to spend a few minutes of your week with us, because today we're going to be talking about putting your yes on the table for God and how you can move from fear steps to faith steps as you say yes to God. But first, I want to start off reading for you Joshua 1.9, which says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Keep that scripture verse in mind today as we're talking about putting our yes on the table for God. My guest today is Jennifer Hand, who is the executive director of Coming Alive Ministries. She wishes she could sit down and have a strong cup of coffee with each of you. And she does like her coffee strong, just so you know. <laughs> I knew you'd have it, Jen. I I, of do. course I do. Yes. She would ask you, if you were sitting down having coffee with you, she would ask you, what makes you come alive? The things that make Jen come alive are strong coffee. Did we mention she loves coffee? Jesus, of course, collecting coffee mugs for her strong coffee and missions around the world, as well as spoiling her nieces and nephews. Jen founded Coming Alive Ministries in 2012 and loves the honor of traveling nationally and internationally, providing the invitation to come alive in Christ through conferences, retreats, written resources, and counseling. She's had the joy of serving in over 30 countries and speaking at around 40 women's events every year. With her master's degree in trauma counseling, God's opened a unique door for Jen to respond to natural disasters around the world, providing trauma counseling and the hope of Christ on the holy ground of suffering. Welcome to the program, Jen. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like we're having coffee together. I wish we were in person, but this will do. do. This will do in a pinch, right? It will do, but one day we will get that coffee date together in person. I'm sure of it. Yes, I will look forward to that. So Jen, I know that so often our passion comes out of our hurts, trials, experiences. Where did your passion for ministry and for running Coming Alive Ministries come from? Well, the word coming alive came to me when I had lived overseas and I lived overseas as a missionary, loved it, thought I would probably live and die in that country. I that they would name a missionary missionary offering after me someday, right? And uh, but I felt God say, I have more than one place and one people for you to go. And so after two years living in a place where everywhere around me people were waking up these idols, like if literally they would ring a bell to try to wake up their gods. And um, I came back to the Bible Belt and where I live and was traveling around churches and seeing people that knew the living God, but were dead inside. And God just placed on my heart too, Jen, if you know me as a God who is alive, then you need to live fully alive in Christ and invite people to live alive in him as well. So that's where coming alive came about because we have a God who is alive. And so therefore... Um, I want to live life in such a way that people want to know him because they see him in my life. And you do. I have to say from watching you and interacting with you at conferences, that is exactly how you live your life. We share a little bit about what is meant by putting our yes on the table for God. Yes, I tell you what, it is easy to want to control our lives, right? Maybe that's just me. I don't know, but I I have a plan. Um, I'm actually a big dreamer. So I have big dreams and plans, but I kind of expect how I think that God should make them go. (laughs) And um, I remember there was a season of life where God said to me, well, I was reading the book, um, anything by Jenny Allen. And I was like, Lord, I'm already living that out. Right. I have a nonprofit. I live by faith. I'm single. I mean, I'm checking all the boxes here. And the Lord was like, will you put your yes on the table before me? And what that means is wherever I ask you to go, whatever I ask you to do, whenever I ask you to do it, will you just already have your yes there? So you'll be ready. Whether that means loving on your neighbor Zelda upstairs when she's, uh, you know, asking you to make her a ham sandwich, which happened many times, or (laughs) whether that means going to the other side of the world, will you put your yes already there on the table? So when I say, here's what I have next for your adventure, you're there. Oh, got it. But on the flip side, then 
what holds people back from putting their yes on the table for God? Well, there's a thousand different fears, I think. And, uh, and not just, I can speak to me, uh, but I know you, all of us have these fierce stops where um, I pulled a lot of my friends, a lot of women online, and I just asked the question, I want to say yes to God, but blank. And you can insert all kinds of things into that blank. And it may be different every day. Um, some for me, I worry what people will think can insert that as a fear stop, or I worry there won't be enough resources. How am I going to fund the yes to God? <laughs> um, really even deeper than that, I worry, is God really good? Like he says, mm -hmm. so I can trust him with my yes. So every morning, really, we can come up with a different fear or even a couple different ones every day. Right. And that's what tries to stop us from saying yes. And that's one of the biggest tactics that I think the enemy uses against us. But that's also why I believe that's the number one command throughout scripture. It's the most repeated command. Do not be afraid. Do not worry about tomorrow. Be anxious for nothing. And that's why I wrote Breaking Anxiety Script, How to Reclaim the Peace God Promises. Because Jen, I think you're exactly right. Some of us walk around with, with fear and dread over big things every day. But I think even more common than that are the fear stops that you're talking about. The dialogue that we're listening to in our head that what will people think? And can I really trust God? I want to talk more about this when we come back from this commercial break. Friends, we're going to take a real quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk with Jen more about putting our yes on the table for God and moving from fear stops to faith steps. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your Hope Filled Perspective, where my guest today is Jen Hand from Coming Alive Ministries. And before the break, we started talking with Jen about what does it mean to put our yes on the table? So Jen, you kind of explained what that means. And it sounds like it comes back to, are we going to be obedient to whatever God asks us to do, even when it might not make sense? and definitely might not be comfortable. Is that fair? Uh, yes. And I will be honest, often it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right? I think I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Because when it makes sense, it's not really as scary. Right. And right. Um, um, so that's why I do love like Joshua 1, 9. God's talking to Joshua, who's about to take on this big adventure and leading people and he's taking over from Moses hello like a spiritual superhero right yeah and I believe God said to him fear not be, uh, be strong and courageous uh, the next part is key for I am with you not condemning and pointing his finger like I believe he said it because he knew he was afraid and so he reminds him I am with you and I think he reminds us that too I need it I don't know about you but Frequently, I need it. Yes. And I'm grateful for the stories in the Bible, like Joshua, to be our role models and our examples. But will you share with my listeners, what does it look like for you with putting your yes on the table for God? Let's help them understand what that might look like, even knowing that what God asked you to do might be different than what he asked me to do. Yes. And you know what? So I can totally say I have an identical twin sister. Like we have the same, you know, everything's different. I mean, the same except our fingerprints. Right. Uh, but my yes to God is very different than her. Yes. So I can say from experience, even when you have someone that looks just like you, um, her yes to God is being a mom to four kids and being a church planner's wife. And her yes is, um, doing the dishes on Monday when she's listening to the podcast, you know, or, um, my yes to God, putting my yes on the table is different. And often it means I get a call. Hey, Kit, we've just had a natural disaster in this country. Can you come? And i um, just saying, yes, um, my yes to God looks like Monday in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, leaving to go to another country, even when people would say stay at home because God said go and minister some hope on the holy ground of suffering. Um, so my yes some days looks like for real, when my neighbor knocks on the door in the middle of a live TV interview and wants a plunger and <laughs> saying yes to God is loving the neighbor and saying, okay, I'll find you one. Um, and then sometimes it means getting on a plane and going somewhere else. So how does living with your yes on the table look like coming alive in your faith? Well, I think when your faith is alive, 
then you remember again, that point, God is alive. And he said, I going to give you life, all life. And faith is alive in us and we are living and active in it. Then it is an adventure. It's just the most fun to say yes, because I don't know what that yes is going to mean, but what I do know is that God is going to show up and he's going to do more Ephesians 3.20 than I could ever ask or imagine when I say yes. And um, I don't want to come across as some like super saint who's just like, yes, I love it. Take me, you know, I'm never afraid. No, I have learned um, to do it afraid. And I just want to encourage the listeners that if you have fear, that does not mean that you're not walking in faith. Um, faith is, I believe, believing in the darkness, what God showed you in the light. So good. Absolutely. For you personally, because I know it can be different for, for all of our listeners, but for you personally, how do you know when it's a holy nudge from God to provide a plunger <laughs> or to let someone in in traffic or to go, you know, to Columbia? How, how have you learned to listen and discern the voice of God that's leading you so that you don't say yes to everything, thinking that everything is from God? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. And I think one of the things that showed up when I asked people, I want to say yes to God, but I'm afraid of blank. One of them is hearing God's voice wrong or hearing thinking he's saying to do something and he's not. And the way I know to do it is I just have to be with him. Like I have to start my day spending time deep into his word and burying myself in the truth so that I will recognize his voice and know his character and know what his word says. And uh, my coffee time with Jesus in the morning is such a guidance to me. And yes, scripture doesn't say, um, you know, if you're standing before a decision, like, you know, do I go to Costa Rica next week? Uh, it's not like I can turn to Revelation Revelation 3 verse 7 and it says yes um, but I do know the voice and the character of God from knowing his word and so it's such a, an amazing thing I was reading in Hebrews today where God's word is alive and active and then we are promised a spirit of the Holy Spirit who's also alive inside of us the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us and so you pack those two together and um, I'm gonna err on the side of when I when God says if I put my yes before him and he's asking me to do something that he I'm going to follow his voice. And, um, and yes, yeah, sometimes we get it wrong, but the Bible characters did too. And that's what I love about the, the grace of our God. Right. And isn't that comforting to know that even when we do get it wrong, God knows that our heart is to get it right. And he can redeem anything. He can teach us through those mistakes. And if anything, teach us more about fine tuning our ears to hear him mm -hmm. above all others. So we were talking about moving from fear stops to faith steps, which I absolutely love that word picture. So will you share what fear stops do you personally struggle with and how can you move past them so that our listeners get a sense for what fear stops might they be dealing with and how can they push past the fear stops to the faith steps? I think my biggest fear stop is rejection. Raise your hand if you're listening right now. And I can just imagine that maybe there are some <laughs> um, that I fear rejection. So what if I say yes to God and I do this thing and people don't like it or receive it? Or, um, you know, for me in ministry that writing a book called My Yes is on the Table, I had 11 years of no's from publishers before I got the yes. And I wanted to give up. I wanted to shrink back. I have given up many times. And um, so rejection from people is a big fear of mine. And um, it has made me want to stop many times and shrink back into whatever I'm doing, because I can want to get people's approval versus God's and, um, you know, a people pleaser among me. And uh, so that I think would be one of my big fear stops, to be honest, is what will, what will you think of me? What will people think? Will I be received well? And I am so grateful for the, the ways, the more I know who I'm in Christ, the more I can walk in what Christ has called me to do, mm. even afraid of rejection. So if you don't like this podcast interview, don't tell me and give Michelle, <laughs> give Michelle's podcast a five-star review. Okay. So that's all I'm just saying. <laughs> oh girl, I love you. So <laughs> Fear of rejection, I think, is such a big one. What about fear of failure? Yes, 
that's another one that can keep you up at night, can't it? Uh, what if I do this yes thing and if I fall flat on my face? Um, what if, you know, I wonder if when Joshua is leading the people, if he thought, what if they end up wandering in the wilderness for 40 more years? And, um, and it's my fault as a leader. So yes, fear of failure can paralyze us from um, wanting to start anything. Like what if I start it and it flops? And um, what I love about the love of our amazing, gracious God is that he comes alongside of us in those fears of failures. And he says, you know, I will equip you that which I have called you to, I will be faithful to complete in you. And um, so to me, that's the best fail safe plan <laughs> right there is um, what may look like failure to me. He promises he will fulfill what he has planned for us. And so I, I have to rest in that. I have to give myself good pet talks at night. <laughs> you know, just try, try, just risk. Just, I mean, even if you're not going to be good at it, try anyway. You know, I was talking to another guest recently about imposter syndrome, which really comes back to a sense of inadequacy. You know, like Moses in the Bible, Moses said, who am I that you would send me? And yet, Jen, you're going all over the world. You've been to over 30 countries. Do you ever wrestle with the imposter syndrome or wondering who am I that God would send me into this arena? Oh, yes, 100%. There's always a speaker you can look to that you think she should be the one. There's always a writer that you're like, they should write this message or it's already been written before. Um, there, I mean, even I just said these words last week because I'm going to provide some missionary care, um, which counseling to me feels more um, scary because I don't know, I can easily feel like an imposter, even though I have the same degree that my counselor friends do, you know, um, and I just think that it is so easy for the enemy to paralyze us in that way where we're so busy comparing the person running the race next to us that we're missing the race marked out for us. And um, I ran a marathon once. I like to add that to anything I can. <laughs> you should. <laughs> and I, I ran a marathon and I'm going to tell you that by the time I finished the race, the person that had won had gone back to their home country, had a banquet and ran another one. You know, um, it took me that long, but um, I, what I learned in that is it didn't matter the pace that I had, the how slow it took me. If I was just running the race mark for me, what mattered is at the end, I finish. And that's what I have to remind myself. Mm, that's good advice. Good wisdom, because I think we tend to get in a hurry. And we tend to put the pressure on ourselves to hurry through, finish fast and move on to the next thing. And so often in scripture, we see God is not in a hurry. In fact, he asks us to slow down because he's doing a deeper work. Mm -hmm. Friends, we're going to take a real quick commercial break. But when we come back, I'm going to ask Jen to share with you her hope-filled perspective for how do we put our yes on the table for God and move from fear stops to faith steps. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your hope-filled perspective where my guest today is Jen Han. And we're talking about putting our yes on the table. And Jen challenges people to do this at, at conferences that she speaks at. And we would challenge you to do that today, to pray through, God, what are you asking me to do? What are you asking me to say yes to? But Jen, if a listener is afraid to put their yes on the table for God, what hope-filled perspective would you offer them today? I want to offer you the hope-filled perspective of it's, it's worth it to come to God with that fear and to say, this is what's stopping me from my yes. And listen to his voice of truth speak back to you. And I'll, I'll share just a quick personal story. And um, when I when this message was stirring in me, and I was writing the book um, in 2019, I it was in February, and I had put my yes on the table and was offered the opportunity to go to the Middle East to minister in a very um, hot spot of the world. And right before I went, things increased in the conflict and it was all in the news. And I had people coming to me saying, don't go, do not go, saying their final goodbyes as if they were saying goodbye to me for good. And I want to say that I was full of faith and not afraid, but I had said yes to God and I wanted to pull that back 
and say, no, I'm not going. And fear went with me. I went afraid the whole way. But when I got there, I arrived at the first refugee home I went to in the middle of this hot spot that I almost didn't go to because I was afraid. Afraid of what would think, afraid of death, afraid of nothing. And when I got there, this woman dressed in full garb, all I could see was her eyes. She said, I knew you were coming for me because I had a dream where this man named Jesus said, you're going to come tell me who he was. Wow. And in that moment, I thought, I never want to let fear stop me from saying yes, because who has Jesus told I'm coming for them? Because he came for them. And I want to do it afraid. And I want to encourage you, listener, who has Jesus told that you're coming for them to tell them he came for them and do it afraid? Wow, what an amazing testimony. Because we really do not know how God is preparing the way for us. Mm -hmm wherever he's asking us to walk, whether it's a foreign country or it's just the neighbor next door who's not very kind. We don't know, but he is setting up the dots for us eventually to connect, but he's waiting for us to say, yes, yes, Lord, I will do it. Here I am. Send me. Jen, as we close out this episode, if someone is really struggling with this concept of putting their yes on the table, maybe Maybe they've said yes before and it didn't turn out the way they thought, or maybe they're not sure that this is really God's voice. Whatever the question is, what suggestion do you have that someone might begin to implement today to make just a small change to move towards that yes on the table? I think there's something about action that really does a thing in us. And so I would encourage you to find however creative you are creatively, hard word to say, you want to do this, um, just a piece of paper, a journal, a um, write it in the sand, write the word yes, just write it before the Lord. And then even on that paper, you can write your prayer of surrender. Here's my fears of yes. Here's what I'm scared of or on a different piece of paper, wherever, if you're on a hike, you know, write it in rocks. Uh, I just encourage you to somehow, some way mark the word yes, even afraid. And that begins an act of surrender, even when we're like, I want to say yes, but uh, I'm scared. And when we do that, and I do that often, I have to be reminded. I, I mean, I just wrote a book about it and I have to be reminded every day. Yes, I will do this, even afraid. And oh, help friend, me, Lord. That'll keep happening. Every <laughs> book he's had me write, I have to keep coming back to the message he gave me to pen for me first and for other people. So you are in good company. <laughs> Uh, don't you wish we didn't have to, you know, like, okay, check, that's done. <laughs> I do. I do. And one day we won't, when we get to glory, all these things that we're continuing to have to work on to become more like him, eventually they will pass and the new will come. And I'm excited about that. Friends, as we close out this episode, I want to share with you Isaiah six, verse eight, that says, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, Lord, send me. That summarizes this whole episode. This summarizes this idea that, that Jen has put forth about putting your yes on the table and moving from fear stops to faith steps. Are you willing to pray that prayer that we read in Isaiah? Here I am, Lord, send me. And if you do that, we would love to hear about it. Jen and I would both love to hear how the Lord works and moves in you and increases your faith in the process. And if you know someone who's really struggling to know what is it that the Lord wants me to do and should I do it, should I not do it, consider sharing this episode with them. I think you'll be encouraged. We're not saying God's going to send every one of you to Colombia or Costa Rica or Iran. It may just be He's going to put you right behind somebody who's got a cranky baby in Walmart that just needs you to say, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. It's not bothering me. He can use all of us in so many different ways. But the question is, are you willing to be used? And I'm going to leave you with that question today. Jen, would you be willing to pray for our listeners who want to consider putting their yes on the table? I would love to. Lord, I pray for each listener today. Even before we started this podcast, Michelle prayed for those 
that need to hear this message to be here. And so I believe that you brought them here for such a time as this. God, I pray for that fill in the blank. I want to say yes to God, but God, would you lift that fear and even that person right now, that listener's face towards your eyes to hear you say, just like you did to Joshua, be strong and courageous. And then this part is key for I am with you. Lord, thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us, that you came to be with us, that you dwell within us, that you empower us for our yes. So I pray for each of the listeners, for, for us in general, to with a maybe trembling hands of surrender to say, yes, Lord, here I am send me, send me to my neighbor, send me to that other mom that needs encouragement, send me to a new church, send me, here I am, send me God, and that each one of us will say yes, and we will have stories of how the yes steps led to the promised land, just like it did for Joshua and the people in the book of Joshua. Thank you for your promises, and that you never fail, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jen, where can our listeners find your book? Uh, Well, it comes out in April and it'll be um, available at Moody and online. It's called My Yes is on the Table, Moving from Fear to Faith. And if you want to follow along until there, until then, I'd love to be your friend. You know, you know, don't reject me, please. Don't reject me. (laughs) Um, You can find me on social media as Coming Alive Jen um, and comingaliveministries.com. All right. And friends, we will put all that information for you so that you can find Jen, follow her ministry, know when her book comes out. We will put all of that in the show notes at drmichelleb.com. It's been a great discussion, Jen. Thank you for coming on, sharing your wisdom and insight and encouragement to put our yes on the table. Friends, I hope that something in this episode inspired you, encouraged you, motivated you. Go ahead and ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to put my yes on the table? And I don't think you will be disappointed. Until we meet again next week, I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Bankson. May you have a hope-filled week.